Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And on this week's Roundtable podcast, we have the usual suspects, minus, minus one. We got the Zen Master. Breathe in the mailing, breathe out the marketing. Mike Zeno. Mike, how are you? I'm doing really well. Glad to be here. Glad you're you're here and um, not risking your life in some, you know, towering inferno. So, great. <laughs> Uh, we've got the technician, Eric Peterson. Eric, how are you? Good. Happy to be here today. Good to see you. And um, it's always all a little uncomfortable for me to see you without, like, you know, a pork rib in your mouth coming from the... What? Coming from Tennessee. <laughs> so, you got to be kidding me, man. You've I'm got the most that. feared woman in the country. Let me finish my intro. The terrorist hunter, Mimi Schmidt. Mimi, how are you? I'm doing much better. It's nice to see you. You're on the mend, which is great. I'm, on the mend. I'm off my crutches after five weeks. Whoop. Fantastic. Wait a Fantastic. minute. I, what? You just said you couldn't do the tip of the week. I am off my crutches. But I still have that huge boot you're on. You're still injured. But you I'm still injured. I still am work two, two hours of PT every Tuesday morning. We're not going to get through this intro. I can't do the tip of the week. I mean, well, this is the show. The this intro. is the show. I love it when you call me Big Pop. Uh, Tate Litchfield, Tate, how are you? Good. Yeah, like Mimi, full of excuses. <laughs> Fantastic. Was that, a, was that a dig? I don't even no, know. just because she made me do tip of the week last week, like totally on the wow. spot. Which was I mean, not that good, by the way. Guys, it was I, that I, good. you do not want Mimi to cloud up and rain all over you, okay? <laughs> oh, Mimi and I, we're tight. We're tight. But All right. Scott that, and I, uh. mm. Speaking of Scott, you love him. The professor, the flight school Sherpa, the man, the myth. Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landmoto.com. Learn anything about anything, investorninjas.com. Scott Todd, how are you? Mark, I'm doing great, man, but it looks like you might need a haircut. I just got a haircut. and We can't um, tell. I'm growing it long, and I'll take it. Because right when I got on, Eric Peterson's like, man, your hair looks great. So I'll take that. Like man bun? Like man bun? Oh, man bun. Oh, man bun. Wait, were you able to understand Eric? Because he didn't have the the rib out of his mouth or what? Like, No, he had the burnt ends going. And I could completely. You might have said you need a haircut. And it sounded like good haircut, but the pork rib kind of muffled it. Yeah, the pork rib muffled it. Muffled it. Wait, if you turn around, is there a man bun back there? There might be. <laughs> oh! <laughs> For those of you who can't see the video, oh. <laughs> Tune in on YouTube to see, does Mark have a man bun or not? Anyways, we got a great topic for the round table. And so I'm going to just kind of phrase it this way. Because this is, this is sort of a, a pet peeve that... Um, I have like other people like notice it in me and they call me out on it. And now I'm calling other people out on it. Um, we'll just pick on Scott Todd. So I'm in Tampa and we go to this really nice place, like incredible restaurant called Burn Steakhouse. Of course, Tate couldn't make it, but whatever. That's a whole other story. So it's a massive menu. Like you can't go wrong on this menu. And I look up at the server and I say, what do you recommend? And the server kind of looks at me and Scott looks at me like, why are you asking the server? Like, well, you know, well, they work here. They kind of know what's good. Like, you can read the menu. You know what you like. Pick what you like. Like, he doesn't know your tastes. He might think that, you know, the, (laughs) the, the lamb chops are good and you don't like lamb. Maybe you're a vegan, whatever it is. And so, you know, and so we get these questions oftentimes, and whether it's a tax question or a accounting question, but ultimately the answer is, well, it's your business. What do you think you should do? So Scott Todd, give me an, ex- like an example of, of this in, in the real world in our, our land investing niche. Okay, so, uh, you know, as an example, someone will say to me, hey, I can, you know, I, I think I can buy the property for, X dollars, you know, $2,000, for example. 
but I might only be able to sell it for, you know, $5,000, maybe 4,500. So I'm only gonna like maybe double my money or, you know, not really gonna hit that 300, a thousand percent return Mark talks about. So yeah, like, what do you think? What is, what is the most you would pay for this property? And like, that's a hard question to answer because, yeah. because like, like, I don't know. It just really depends on the situation, right? Like, do I have someone ready to buy it? Do I think it's going to sell fast versus slow? Um, uh, am I okay making that amount of money or, or not? Right. So like, there's many, there's many hypotheticals that you could throw in there. And I think that that's sometimes, you know, sometimes you got to figure out like, what is my yield requirement? Like how much yield do I want to make on a particular deal or how much money do I want to make on the deal? Or, uh, you, know, you know, it's not always about getting the best deal. It's about getting the deal done. You're an investor, invest. Right, right. So Tate, how do you, how do you kind of help people with their, their thinking so that they kind of take ownership of it? Not, hey, um, what do you guys do? But think about it in the terms of, you know, what is going to be is me as the CEO of my own company, I should be thinking about what I'm comfortable with. Well, I think it's important to realize that this is a process. It's not something that you're, most people are good at immediately, right? Most people who get in and start building the land business have never built their own business before. So they're not comfortable thinking that way. And so it takes time for them to adopt the CEO mindset, the CEO mentality. And like Scott said, what Scott's margins are might be way higher than what your margins are. And you've just got to ask yourself, is this a worthwhile activity based on my expected return? Does it make sense for me? How would I do this? How would I, you know, we're happy to share, right? Assuming we can, and it's not something we're not going to feel comfortable sharing about, like maybe a probate question, maybe a legal advice. We're not going to give that kind of information, but we're happy to share as long as we don't hinder you from spreading your wings and making those decisions on your own. And, and the reality is it just takes time. You got to get comfortable being uncomfortable. And some people catch on to it really, really quickly and others don't. I mean, we see it all the time. How quickly should I outsource? Well, the, the, the cop out answer that we always give is once it becomes painful, once you decide you don't want to do that job anymore, outsource it. Well, when is that, right? What's, what's the time frame for that? There is no date. There's no timeline. You know, for Scott, he hated scrubbing that list after one night. He needed to outsource immediately, right? For other people, they love it. I don't get it, but they love it, right? And that's okay. Keep going, right? So I, I think it yeah. just takes time. You got to do a lot of uh, reflecting, reflecting on your business. You got to be working on your swim lanes. You got to take real accountability for the success and failures that you're having within your business. And that'll help you realize when it's time to kind of expand and spread your wings a little bit. Yeah. What, what I love about our coaching program though, is that, and we always say this from day one, it's not coaching therapy. So when you ask us a question, we don't just sit back and like, well, what do you think you should do? Right. Um, and kind of, you know, boomerang it right back to you. No, we, we do utilize our experience and in, in, in shortcut it for you. But there are certain things where we'll tell you what we're doing, but ultimately the question is the, the real, the real answer is well, what are you most comfortable doing? And so Mimi, I'd love to know from you, like when you're having these one-on-one -on -one coaching calls, where, what kind of question do you get where you're like, um, I'm going to tell you what I do. But ultimately, this is sort of a personal preference, like, you know, like market burns with Scott, like, you know, Scott might eat that steak medium rare, but, you know, Mark is, is going, you know, eating way cleaner than Scott. And you can tell just by looking at me on the video, um, how much healthier I look compared to him. So one of those things. For me, I, 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 that's, that's ridiculous. That, that, for me, that's what I am. It's what VAs do what, right? Um, you can have so many different VAs do so many different things, and there's no one definition of an intake manager or a Facebook poster or a sales assistant, right? It's really about 
not only your personal preference about how to run your business, but if you've got a VA, you want to be able to help them develop their career and give them more interesting, exciting things to do, right? And you may find that you have a VA that's not good, so good at what you originally hired them for, but maybe they have a talent that, that you can use another way. So I found that I hired these people and their jobs morph over time. And so what I originally thought about how I wanted my business to go becomes more efficient, people get better, their roles change. So it, you know, it all depends upon where we are in, in the, the life cycle of our businesses too. So I think that question of, I, you know, how do you do it? You know, what do you have each one of these roles, these people do? It, it's very, it's very personal about where your business is. It's not so much, it's not black and white. It's not black and white. So Eric Peterson, how do you handle these sort of, you know, grayish type of inquiries that you get where you don't want to be, you know, kind of jerky about it and be like, well, I don't know, what would you do? But you you want them to think in a way where they can take total ownership of it, but still be comfortable enough that they're not just totally off track. Yeah, so <clears throat> I think that that sometimes um, our students or the the community in general they they're just looking for an example. Um, they might not always be looking to do exactly what what I do or what Tate does or or somebody else, but you know we talk about following the recipe and, and, and uh, you know, doing the processes that we teach, but there are aspects where you've got to kind of make your own choices and, and do your own thing. But for those new investors, um, sometimes they don't even know where to begin with that. So, um, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna share our perspective and, and maybe how we do certain things. Um, but kind of like others were saying, you know, I mean, what, I'm doing today may not apply exactly to a situation of a current student of mine. You know, they might not be at that point yet, or, or maybe they're past or, or who knows. But um, I think the important thing is being willing to, to share an example so that someone has kind of a jumping off point to say, okay, well, I, I understand what you're doing there. Now let me make it my own and, and run with it in my business. Yeah, no, I love it. Um, Zen Master, when you guys are doing nightcap and people are asking you all types of questions, are there any, is there ever a point in time where you're, you're kind of uncomfortable with the question because it's, it's, it, it is so personal? No, I don't think any personal questions are uncomfortable. I don't like to answer anything that would be like tax related or legal because, you know, I don't want to be perceived as giving any advice like that. So I, I would, I would probably shy away from those type of answers, but I, I think what we're talking about here is is uh, customizing the template, right? So, you know, what's taught in flight school is a template. And at some point um, through your own experience um, and through, you know, we can we can show them examples and, and of what we've done in certain situations, but experience is gonna be the true teacher here. And then you're gonna slowly morph that template into, um, uh, you know, what it is, uh, you know, that'll work for you. I know. I know that we always uh, talk about, Scott talks about in the flight school, you know, that's a recipe for brownies, right? So he, maybe he's teaching that brownie mix, but when you're done, you could make muffins, right? You can make scones. I mean, he's given you a template, but then you can take that template and you can alter it uh, to fit your need. As, so I think that, and I also think of when we were talking about this, I sort of think about how people measure success too. Some people might think of uh, more time, more freedom, more money. Or, or I want to have a sense of accomplishment. I, I, I grew something from nothing. So that's all very personal. So, I mean, we're, we're all following the same model, but the metrics that we use to judge our success and the particulars of our business are going to vary. But that's sort of like when you become artistic with it. That you, you've learned the fundamentals, you've, they're ingrained in you, you know the five plates, you know how to spin them. Now it's like, okay, I'm going to customize because I sort of feel like I'd like to do this a little bit different or maybe I'd like to go after these type of properties or I'd like to, you know, whatever. Uh, that's, that's just going to come with experience. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it, I really love what you said. And I, I really think that when you know your why deeply, you can endure any how, and then the how is not that critical, but it's all about, is this going to get me closer to my why? And 
use kind of use that as the decision matrix and then kind of bounce it off of um, the expert like uh, Mimi or Eric or Tate, I guess Scott Todd too. You know, you know, so like and 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 just kind of get their example. So, Scott Todd. Well, I think the uh, well, coaches. I'm being Mark, tough on you today. I I think the coaches could be like um, when you go bowling. I think I've said this before, right? You have these uh, what are they called bumpers, like so it doesn't you don't get a gutter ball. Like they're going to prevent you from getting a gutter ball, but you know, you, there's there's lots of room on that alley the way you bowl, you know. So they're sort of keeping you from going way off track with these sort of ideas that may not be very productive. They're sort of keeping you right in line. You'd be more likely to get that strike. Yeah, absolutely, Scott. Do you do you like that example? Yeah, the, the gutter ball, bumper, bumper ball. Yeah, I think that's a good way of doing it. You know, it's it's really hard to answer questions that pertain to a certain person's financial aspects too, right? You know, and you kind of talked about this, like uh, tax advice, legal advice. Like, well, should I form an LLC? I, I don't know. Should you? You know, like it de it depends. There's a lot of it depends questions when you're talking about business formation in legal entities. And that's where you really have to have people that, you know, either do your research or talk to people because, you know, what, what might work for me may not work for you in your situation. And, it, you know, I always tell people, especially when it comes to like the LLC thing, man, I know a guy, he still buys land in his own name. He's been doing it for decades. Okay. Like yeah. every property he buys is in his own name. Well, he has a reason why he does it. I don't understand it. But someone's told him to do it, and that's what he's doing. But, you know, that works for him. Yeah, I mean, I think ultimately what we're talking about is an exercise in um, in humility, where just because you are you know more than someone else, you really have to be able to step back. and Because there's, there's sort of this egoic type of, um, you know, that need to be wanted or that need to be, you want to, just show you what a you know smart you are and, and what an expert you are, but there are those kinds of questions where the real good answer is being hu being humble about it and saying, honestly, I don't know what is best for your particular situation. Only you know that, and I can tell you what I do, but this is a very personal thing, and the real answer is I don't know. And to get back to Scott's example, it might be. Maybe an LLC formation, it would be good for you, but I don't know your tax situation. The real answer is talk to your tax professional or talk to your, talk to your legal professional um, about that. I mean, so I always like to say, like the only thing I'm really an expert in is, you know, I, I know I don't know. And that way I can keep an open mind about things and that as I get more information, I can be open to it and not sort of be trapped by expertise. So um, I think, you know, it was a fun discussion. It was a good discussion. Um, I'd love to give Eric Peterson the last word on this. <laughs> the last word. Thanks, Mark. Um, you know, I think <laughs> the whole conversation today was, was built around this idea of you are starting your own business and with that comes responsibility right? You've got to make decisions to either grow your business or let it peter out. And, you know, having others around you in the community or coaches or what have you, um, they're going to help you um, to hopefully make good decisions. But ultimately, it's your business. Um, you know, do the research and reach out to others for help and, you know, go from there. Okay, great, great. Well, we're at that point in the podcast where we get to pick on the Zen master and ask him for his tip of the week, a website, a resource, maybe a quote, a book, something actionable for the art of passive income <laughs> listeners to go improve their businesses, improve their lives. Before we get to Mike's tip of the week, I do have to give a shout out to our sponsor for the week, which is Flight School. Learn how the next 16 weeks can literally move the needle in your life. Start building up that passive income and do it quickly, safely, efficiently with somebody who's done it literally thousands of times. Go up that mountain of land investing. Learn as you do 
with Scott Todd as your Sherpa doing it and start, you know, really living the benefits of passive income without renters, without rehabs, without renovations, without rodents. Learn more. Go to landgeek.com forward slash training. Thelandgeek.com forward slash training. And I just want to thank the people at Flight School for sponsoring the podcast this week. All right, Mike Zeno. <laughs> what so is this is an old week? quote, but I have a visual to go along with it. And so I thought this would be very helpful. So this is a very good quote, not because I made it up because I didn't make it up. It's rehashed. So do you guys, can you see the picture? Yes. Yeah, it's a, it's a horse. Do you remember this quote, Mark? What's on the horse's tail? The fly. <laughs> So even a fly can travel a thousand miles on a horse's tail. I think what that speaks to is uh, surrounding yourself with people that uh, can help you. So I think that's what we talk about with flight school, with the coaching, is the fact that you can literally change yourself by surrounding yourself with people who are, you know, just can provide a different experience, a different uh, set of skills to you. So that's actually going to go right here on this blank spot on my wall in my new office. So, yeah, you're going to fly. I know it's a rehash, but, you know. But the visual, I think, adds to it. I mean, I get the sense like Tate it just wants to like jump. I love it. Down your throat. I love yeah. that. I love I it. I was gonna write Scott Todd on the horse, but he got mad when I called him a horse once, and I said he was a stallion, not a horse, and I was gonna be the fly. But I don't know. He didn't seem too thrilled before when we brought the step up. But now that we have a visual aid, it makes a lot more sense. It's just the question is, where are you gonna write Scott's name on that horse? <laughs> 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 All sure. right, Kate. I, where, I, I don't see know where, where the room is. <laughs> Kate, I see where we're going with this podcast. It's going to quickly spiral out of control. I, I am kind of curious, though. Like, Mike, yeah. in the background behind you, are those quotes it. of yourself? <laughs> I Listen, this is going to be covered soon. I told Laura, wait a minute. You were supposed to get the quotes, but you weren't supposed to put my initials there. That's so presumptuous. But she thought, oh, I didn't know that. I thought I asked you if you wanted your initials there. So I haven't allowed anybody into the office yet because I need to put a nice mountain scenery over there. Yes, there are a couple of quotes. I do. It's okay. It's all right. I'm, I'm just trying to understand, you know, I mean. Would you I like to see the quotes? Me. Yes. Yes. Certainly. Give us a tour. Holiday, yeah. Yeah, holiday in. The uh, MZ is going to be gone. Uh, I, I, it's too presumptuous. And then, no, I, yeah, no, I, I, I like the I like the MZ. You do? I was kind of presumptuous. I think to have your own. Uh, no, 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 no. It's you know, if it said Mike Zeno, big deal, then yeah. <laughs> this is MZ. You see the other one? Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. Of everything. And of course, the horse with the fly right in the middle. I won't put anybody's name on it. I just know who it represents. No, 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 I, I love it. I mean, Mike, do you go to parties now? And and when people ask, you know, who who you are, do you kind of like go into anchorman mode? You're like people know no. me. He, he hands them he hands them a book of his quotes and it's like here, yeah. here. Is some right. awesome. Would you like some light, this for you? Some light <laughs> reading material. Right. Yeah. <laughs> they call me the Zen master for a reason. Here's my yeah. quotes. Uh, yeah. I mean, look, it's all good, man. All good. No worries. It's all good. Well, I, I do have a, I do, I guess we're, I guess we haven't finished our podcast yet, have we? Well, no, we, we, we can, we can, we can do the uh, awkward, abrupt end. So, okay. Cause um, I just have one do, I just gotta thank the listeners. We end. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I just want to thank the listeners, remind them the only way that Eric Peterson is going to continue coming on these roundtable podcasts with a full rack of ribs is if you do his three little in favors. In his mouth. Man. In his mouth. Chewing them during the podcast is if you do his three little favors. You got to subscribe. You got to rate. You got to review the podcast. Send us a screenshot of that review to support at thelandgeek.com. We're going to send you for free the $97 wholetailing course, how to double your money, 30 days or less, and a free Mike Zeno quote attached to it. <laughs> That's a retail value of $1,200. So... Take advantage of that. Please do it. It really helps us. And um, thank you. So are, are, are we good, everybody? Tate, are we good? We're good. Mike, are we good? We're good. Mimi? Great. Scott? 
Yeah, all good. Eric? We are good. One, two, three. Let's let that freedom, freedom, freedom bring. bring. Pretty good. Not like a better ones. Hey, just curious, um, how many people on this call took action on Tate's tip of the week last week versus mine? I know Zeno took twice the action on mine. Mark, you said you were doing it. Did you do it? I, I did do it, and it did okay, feel that's good. Three, three people took action on my tip of the week that I can account for. How many people gave? See, yeah, because Laura... Mike and Mark, that's my three. Wow. Mimi did it too. That's four, baby. Four. Sorry. There's Jake. the showdown. Hey, it is. listen, hey, that's, that's your guys' loss. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't have anything to prove to you guys. How I big do you write, Mark? Because I started today doing double it's, space because it's a lot. It's really, wow. I can't even read this. It's so wow, ugly. Wow, Mark. Oh my gosh, you guys have been busy. So, wait, wait, what is but that? Today that's I went to double space. Yeah. Yeah. Look at their journals. Look that's at a lot Mark's. of writing. Around, that's a, that's a it's, lot of writing. It's a lot. Look it's a lot of writing. writing stuff. But I've that's been impressing myself with how smart I am. All these things that come out. <laughs> I know. It, it, it's great getting them out. The problem is I can't read them after I write them. There you go. <laughs> so, oh. that's, uh, this that's is interesting. Problem. It is interesting. It's very helpful. No, I might it's, still it's employ Tate's tap because I, I might still employ his. I haven't had a chance. I, I, I'm going to give it a full chance. Okay, okay Dave. no hard feelings it's okay i mean i i it's okay listen i'm 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 cool with it i'm confident i know that the uh listeners are really gonna find a lot of power in outsourcing their entire lives i said i'm cool with it all right we'll see uh, okay we'll see. We'll, see. we'll see um is burns open scott todd yeah it's open it is is it safe to go there that place is like yeah i think it's okay but i don't know i like i still haven't eaten in a restaurant like since march so wow. i think the last like i honestly I the last time i went to a restaurant was with you at the end of the beginning of march wow yeah i i, I haven't been inside a restaurant yeah. but i'm eating outside now yeah um with the misters um and i feel somewhat safer doing that yeah what's oh, weird is like um my wife and i went to the mall the other day and uh, we're like oh let's just go to the food court we go to the food court get some food we and i'm like well where are we gonna eat it because we haven't eaten like like we've eaten in in the car uh on a, on a nice date a nice date in the car uh we've eaten like outside but there was no outside seating him so we sat in the food court and ate it was really kind of weird like should I take down the mask and eat? It's okay. I don't know. I mean, Eric, how, are you are you just bringing in barbecue or oh, are you guys sitting outside? <laughs> Come on, man. We've been out to eat a few times, actually. Yeah. Yeah. What about you, Mimi? We order out a lot because I've been on crutches until Sunday. I couldn't really cook. Been ordering out a lot, or the girls make something. Natalie made homemade pasta, literally like rolled the noodles Ooh. out. Yeah. Wow. That yeah, sounds good. Really, That's yeah, really good. Really yummy. That's what she did last night. Mamma mia. That sounds yeah. really good. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. Um, does, how how well does that freeze, by the way? And just dry it, and, or she sticks the the dough, you know, after it's been cut into the noodles into the fridge, or she dries it. Okay, so I'm just going to put in the chat where to send it. Just put it in some dry <laughs> eyes. And yeah, yeah, know, we, next we week, we'll do like the whole haze test. Okay. Yeah. What about you, Tate? Uh, we haven't really been out. Um, more so because little kids and eating out is kind of a lot of work for us still right now. So we do take out, eat in the car kids are strapped into car seats it's good the little, the little baby masks <laughs> yeah. well that's just it they i mean my daughter won't wear it it's like she's afraid of it she won't do it so we don't go anywhere as a result but uh <laughs> it's all right <laughs> yeah 
I'm, I mean, I'm really excited for uh, the Mike Zeno merch where I can get like a mask that says deal flow solves everything or a picture mm -hmm. of, a, of a horse and a fly and just kind of rep and then just like the MZ as the logo. MZ. What do you think, Mike? You, you could get a like, contract on Etsy. I knew this. I should have hit that. I told her that's presumptuous. I knew it. I knew you guys. I could tell by the way you reacted. You're all like, that is so presumptuous. It's not. It it's was not. not intended to be no, there. I love it. I think it's great. You know, I, I, um, I eat I, out all a lot, Mark, because I eat with, I eat a table of 10 guys twice a week. So <laughs> what are you going to do? It's awesome. I feel bad that Laura's getting blamed for this, the whole quote yeah. thing. <laughs> I, I don't why, know why. Why, why did you even bring her into this? Quote. This is oh, you, Mike. Have you guys noticed how he threw her under the bus yeah. completely? Like, she much. did a big, did you a favor. Is, is Laura there? Can she defend herself? No, she's busy. She's busy. Okay. Oh, don't worry, Mike. I got her phone number. I'll call her. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, well, thanks, everybody. Um, see everyone next week.